friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. Either way, thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. If you are new, hi, my name's Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. And today's video is super fun and I've been meaning to make it for forever because these little cape things have been a staple in my wardrobe since I learned to make them and I want to finally just make a tutorial because they're super super easy to make. I'm going to show you just how to make one because once you learn how to make one it's really easy to figure out how to make the other ones. The one thing that I will talk about is the bat one. Just it's very very simple. Basically yes I am super excited to show you guys how to make your own DIY little capelet and then afterwards I will show you all the capelets that I have made myself. I tried them all on and have a little fashion show kind of moment because yeah why not have it all in one place. So yes if you are interested to see how I made them and also like how I style them then please keep on watching. Um, I hope you enjoy and uh, let's get into it. I'm gonna start by taking some measurements. For the neck you're gonna want to wrap your measuring tape around your neck as loosely as you would like the collar to fit. For me I'm getting 14 and since we're gonna be folding our fabric in four pieces you're gonna want to take the number you got and divide it by 2 pi, so 14 divided by 6.14 essentially, which gives us about 2.2. So that's my neck hole measurement. You're going to want to write that down. And then for how long I want mine, I'm actually not going to use this measurement. I'm just going to use as much of my fabric as I can fit. But if you were to want to measure this out, just place the measuring tape at the top of where the collar would sit. However, keep in mind that because of your shoulders being in the way, it will hang down lower over your chest than it will your shoulders. Now I'm taking this fabric and laying it down, folding it over first in half and then in half again so we have it in like four pieces. Then I pin it all the way together so we're not worried about it shifting around while I'm trying to cut it and trace out my pattern. Just using some straight pins all down the sides of it. Then you're going to want to measure out the neck hole. So take the measurement we took from before. For me it was about 2.2 and just use a piece of tailor's chalk to draw a line at the desired length all the way across from the folded over point of your fabric. That way it'll be right in the center. Next for the cape length, you're going to want to take that measurement that we took from our collarbone down to how long we wanted it. Uh, but for me I'm just maximizing the cape as the most amount of fabric I can fit with this. So 13 inches down was as much as I could get a perfect circle on this fabric. So I'm just taking my ruler and measuring 13 inches down. However, you're going to want to measure from the bottom of the neck hole to get the right length. And once I've dotted in all the lines at the 13 inches, I'm just connecting them with a piece of chalk in a circle. And this was my first time using my new rotary cutter and I love it, uh, but you're gonna wanna just cut out the shape that you got, leave a little bit of space for a seam allowance, but use scissors or rotary cutter, whatever you have, and then going ahead and cutting the neck hole out. I'm just using scissors with this since it's a little bit smaller. And again, make sure to leave a seam allowance. So at this point, your cape should still be folded in quarters, but you can go ahead and unpin it a little bit so you can just have it in half. If you have a patterned fabric like myself, you're going to want to take this moment to decide which way is facing correctly for you. Obviously, it's going to hang different ways around your body um, since it's a circular piece of fabric, but for me, I wanted the witches in the front to be like mostly facing up, so I decide where that is the most prominent and fold the cape in half so I can cut it down the center. Basically right now the long part is where my shoulders will go and I'm cutting the open down where my sternum would be if I was wearing it. You can use a ruler or chalk if you're worried about getting an uneven line. Now it's time to just hem all the edges. This may or may not be necessary depending on the type of fabric you're using, but I like to do it. It just adds a little bit of nice professionalism. So I'm going ahead and using some sewing pins to pin all my edges down and then I'll use my sewing machine to get those all stitched in place. I think I'm using a zigzag stitch, uh, but honestly it doesn't matter. Just use whatever you're comfortable with. And if you don't have a sewing machine, of course, sewing by hand is totally 
workable, um, just takes a little bit longer. Once the center hems are stitched down, I can go ahead and pin down the collar. If you're having a lot of trouble getting a nice curve on this, I would recommend cutting some little slits to help the fabric lay easier. And going ahead again with the sewing machine and getting that all sewn down. And then I had all this leftover spiderweb fabric from a bunch of different projects, and I decided that to use the scraps, it would be fun to make like a little spiderweb trim around the base, but um, in the past I've also used just lace or just hemmed it around. Whatever you want, you can skip this step, or if you want to add a little bit of design, adding some lace or some ribbon or some scraps of other fabric like I'm doing here is just a lot of fun. So I'm laying out the cape flat on the floor and taking all these irregularly shaped pieces of fabric and cutting them more if need be and then just kind of layering them with sewing pins very sporadically all around the edges of the cape. I think this is just a super fun way to use up cool scrap fabric, scrap pieces of lace. I never throw out fun pieces of tiny scraps because you can always use them in a little project like this down the road, I feel like. And then I'm just going ahead and while everything is pinned in place, I'm sewing them down with my sewing machine. With this, I would highly recommend a wide zigzag stitch. That way you can cover a lot of the area and make sure that everything's in place despite it being pinned kind of sporadically down. And once all of the trim is attached, I am attaching the fasteners and this can look a lot of different ways just depending what I have on hand, it kind of changes. In this case, I'm sewing on a little pair of snaps that I found that are like super super teeny tiny but this is such a light and meshy material that it won't have much trouble staying together but I'm just going ahead and hand stitching in a tiny pair of snaps some other options for you are buttons or two pieces of ribbon to tie together really just depends the look you're going for and the materials you have on hand so don't be afraid to get creative I've even used big bat charms and like lobster jewelry clasps to keep some of them in place in the future. So in the next section, I will show you some of the ones I've made so you can get a little bit of idea for like different materials, different clasps, different trims you can attach. Um, yeah, so let's go into that. Okay, so we're starting with the first one I made. This was made out of a curtain that I found at Value Village. It's kind of sheer with these black flowers running through it, and I thought it would be perfect for like kind of a flowy little thing. The trim on it is a scarf that I also found at Value Village and just chopped up. It was just like a cool lacy scarf with all these funky little things hanging down it, and I had to use a couple different pieces to make it wrap around the whole thing. <laughs> I'm wearing it with this vintage dress that used to be my mom's and this really cool bat belt that that I found online. I also used this kind of old piece of elastic lace around the collar. I don't remember what this was off. I think it might have been the leg band on a pair of stockings, but I thought it wrapped around the collar kind of in a perfect way. So that's what the collar is. And then for the clasp on this, I'm using these giant silver bats that are really cool. They have three points on them and I just attached them with some little jewelry clips. I got them in a big pack of like Halloween charms from online ages ago. I really like them as a cape closure. This was the first like prototype to be sure that I could make the next one. So yes, this was number one. Now let's go on to number two, the one that I was super excited for. So this was the official one that I was super, super excited for. I went to Fabricland and bought Velvet Lace just to do this. This is one that I fastened with a ribbon, which I think is still quite cute and gives kind of a whimsical fairy tale vibe, but I also love wearing it open, just like unfastened, and you can see that the velvet lace just looks incredibly fancy, luxurious. It's super, super beautiful fabric that I found on sale, luckily, and as well the lace trim that I got around it was on sale, which I was ecstatic about. The lace that I used is the trim. Well, it's eyelash lace, and it just makes me feel like a fairy or something, like just so cool and elegant and dainty. I was really really happy with the combination of this like lace on lace but two different types of it. I'm wearing it with this long black and red velvet thrifted dress, the same belt as before, and a bunch of handmade necklaces that I made out of some thrift store beads that I found, as well as some arm warmers that I made myself. This is just one of those really, really special pieces to me. I've worn it on tons of dates with Cage to the Graveyard, so it has a lot of fun memories. I absolutely love it. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and after I made this, I was just super excited to figure out what else I could do, which brings me on to my next project, which was bat capes. So this was the first project prototype. I made it out of a thrifted blanket that I found at Value Village and some 
silk sheets that I think I found at the thrift store as well. Patch on it is a bunch of bats that I cut out of some gray felt from the thrift store and on the back I embroidered some bat wings which I think is really fun. The pattern for it I just kind of made up on the spot but it's just kind of points you can figure out something super similar but it was quite easy. I put a little bit of black lace around the collar to give it kind of a more elegant look and I used this giant silver button that I think my mom gave me forever ago. I like this one because it's really cozy on the outside and on the inside it's like really silky. It kind of slips around a little bit so I'm really happy that it has the button to fasten it but it feels really cute with like its little bat patches. Oh and I'm wearing this with a shirt that I modified and a skirt that I painted all the patches on. But this was prototype one and there were some things that I didn't like about it like I wanted to use a material that was like a little softer on both sides and more warm I wanted to make it a little bit longer wanted to like see if I can add a hood maybe perhaps a little set of ears so yes for the first try this was a good prototype but I will now show you what it evolved into which is prototype 2 all right so for the updated back cape I love this one it's so 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 much fun I also made it out of kind of a blanket that I found at the thrift store but it was just like a big black tube it has these super goofy felt ears on it and this little patch that I made it's just a stencil of like a medieval looking bat the sweater itself is super super cozy it's like felty on the inside and just kind of looks like normal uh, sweater material on the outside it was like from a six dollar piece of fabric tube that was just perfect for this project the hood I wanted it to be oversized and goofy which I just think is super fantastic and I really like the wings on the last one so I added that again but I did make it a little longer and the points are a little more pointy because I figured a way to sew them better just basically without the lining it helped it be a lot more pointy. I paired it with some secondhand boots, these leather pants that I found at the thrift store, a belt from the thrift store with a chain from online, and these little skeleton gloves that I found at the dollar store around Halloween time. I absolutely love this hoodie. It makes me feel so freaking cute and it's just like the perfect perfect accessory for just every day but also Halloween. I can't wait for it to be Halloween so I can wear this all the time. Okay so this one was a bit of an early experiment. As you can see there's not a trim on the bottom of this one and it's also white. I think that for people that wear a lot of black in their wardrobe sometimes having like a little white accessory can be really helpful because black on black you know it in really well but when you have white it's like big pop of contrast which can be kind of fun uh, this one is made out of a lace curtain that I found at the thrift store and I also added a little bit of lace around the top of the collar but none around the bottom for this one I used a bunch of buttons all the way down it most of my capes have just one button at the top but this one I decided to put like five or six or something and I also like to wear this one open most of these capelets I like to wear both like open and closed they just give kind of different vibes and I paired this one with a little velvet dress that I got in the children's section of the thrift store with some little glovelets that I made this giant beaded necklace that I also found at the thrift store. This next one is super fancy. I made it out of this fabric that I found at Fabricland when it was not Halloween, but it was like on sale because it wasn't Halloween. It's this amazing like gold glittery like black cat moon fabric that I adore. And I used more of that eyelash lace that I found on sale at Fabricland to do a trim all around it. It just looks super elegant and fancy. This is one that I don't wear very often, but I hope to like, I feel like this is perfect for like a New Year's Eve party or something. Some sort of fancy event. I used a gold clasp on it that I totally stole off of a different cape that I owned that I got at a thrift store but it totally works and I think the clasp just works incredibly well with the gold design. I love the meshy material it's made out of it just feels so light and flowy and fairy like. I paired it with this little blue and black velvet dress you can't really tell but it is blue on top and it has like a mesh top. I got it at the thrift store but the original owner seemed to have got it at H&M and I paired it with a thrifted belt, a bag from the hollow Halloween store and some tights that I found at the thrift store. And we're ending with what we started with. This is the capelet that I showed how to make in the video. It's this mesh fabric with these witches, little stars, and some moons on it. I think it's super fun and Halloween-y. The spiderweb fabric just makes it feel so over-the-top spooky and I can't wait to romp around in the graveyard in this. Like this just feels perfect for that kind of thing. I paired it with this corset and this velvet skirt that I found at the thrift store. The corset I got online and I just really really like how it looks. It feels very very fancy and very very elegant. This choker I also made myself and the snap just works so well and easily to keep together. I also like wearing them as kind of like 
low little shawl things like when you just kind of drape them over your shoulders it feels like an elegant like lady of the manor type of look so yeah super super fun i hope you enjoyed this video this tutorial this little lookbook i hope you are maybe inspired to make your own little capelets because yeah they're super fun and especially if you have a sewing machine i promise you can whip one up in like a day like easily couple hours you will be there and you will be so happy that you have like a fun little cape to add to your wardrobe it's just super exciting okay well i hope you had a wonderful time watching this i really had fun recording all of it and i hope you have a great day or night or whenever you happen to be watching um i hope to see you in the next one bye for now